In today's video, I'm going to show you how I used these to create a really nice chunk of change. Let's get started. Hello, my friend. Welcome to another video. So today, I want to talk to you about making some money. I know that title caught your interest and that's why you're here. So I did a video a few weeks back showing you how I used acrylic paint skins to create jewelry. Beautiful necklaces. Look at how pretty those are. These were made using this right here, a paint skin. Okay, these are a huge seller for me when I go to places like craft fairs or even online. Pop sockets for your cell phone. Another big seller, okay? Made from a paint skin. And today in this video, I wanna to talk to you about some other things that you could do to earn yourself some cash at a local festival, craft fair, art show, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I was going through some finances and I made last year at craft shows almost $8,000 selling little trinkets made from paint skins. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how, and I'm gonna give you some tips to maybe help you along your way into getting into something like this because it's very simple to find a craft fair. It's very inexpensive to join one. Sometimes they're even free. You get yourself a little table with a tablecloth. Get yourself a few, if you're making necklaces like I do. Here, I'll show you this. My dis I'll show you how I display my necklaces. Get yourself one of these uh, bars and have them hang off there nicely. You can get these little tags here online, or I got these, I think, at Hobby Lobby. Get yourself a little sticker. Make it look really professional. People will buy, okay? My chains now, I make my own chains. I make a standard 16 to 18 inch chain for most, and then I'll add an extender chain onto that. So if, you know, the person that's buying it needs it to be a little bit bigger. They have that extra length, okay? But I make my own chains. You can just buy chain with a clasp attached already if you want. Um, there's so many options. But the first thing that you need are paint skins. Now, I create my paint skins just for this purpose. You can collect paint skins off of your art working, your sorry, your studio area, wherever you're painting, you can let them dry on your table and then peel them up. A lot of times you'll get some really unique designs. I, however, am impatient and because I have a channel here and I have to constantly produce videos, I don't have time for them to dry on my table. So I'll just make some and make, you know, my jewelry out of those once they dry. Now, the last time I did this video, I used stencil paper on to create, and some people had it did that and had an issue with that. I will say the thickness of the paint, once you spread it out or you do your design, determines whether it's going to peel off or not. So if it's too thin, like this piece here is very, very thin, you're going to have a hard time getting it off in one piece, but because... I have a nice, I, I, there's not really a measurement to it. It's just a nice, thick, rubbery layer of paint when it's dry. It's going to peel up much easier for me, okay? You'll notice the edges sometimes will tear, but that's because they're really thin right there. So for like this one here, I just poured the paint onto the piece of stencil paper I tilted the paper around till it was somewhat level and then I swiped it and let it dry, okay? But 
you can use instead of the stencil paper because this stuff is expensive anyway. I just had it on hand. You can use something like um, plastic, you know, the painter's plastic you put on your floor. You can use something like a shiny black garbage bag, silicone mat, you know, anything that's a non-stick surface, wax paper, things like that. But anyway, I put mine on this stencil paper. I reuse it. And you'll see it peels right up. Watch this. I don't worry about edges like that. I mean, if you want to, you can. There's just so much here, and I'm not going to use it all anyway. Go nice and slow with it. That one big piece, all right? And I'm going to tell you why I did one big piece in just a few minutes. But look how pretty that is. Right, so you'll see. Look at that. It's like a little birdie face. How cute is that? It, look at that. It looks like the body of a bird. That is really cute. <laughs> I'll show you in a minute, but we're going to peel this up. Just like that. Look at that. Looks just like a bird, a parakeet. That is so pretty. But anyway, there's our custom paint skins. All right, and I made them big because I have some bigger things I want to make out of them. But anyway, you can, as I said, let them dry on your table if you're not creating a piece of art every day like I am and then peel them up. Or you can pick any technique that you like and literally do it on top of either a piece of stencil paper or wax paper or whatever you're using. If I wanted to do Dutch pour, I could take some white paint. You know what? We're gonna test this out today. I'm gonna take some white paint. I'm gonna put it on top of this piece of stencil paper. I'm gonna put some color in and we're gonna to try to blow it around and see what happens. So what I did, I'm gonna show you how I spread the paint out too. I just poured some paint down like this. Just a good old puddle of it. And then I just tilted the paper around to help it spread out. In this case, I probably could even use the blow dryer, right? So I went like this and kind of went down. Whoop, not like that. I <laughs> keep it on the paper for now. It's okay if it comes off after, but you want to get your area covered first before that happens. Okay, so now we came down this way a little bit. This is exactly how I did the other ones. And if you want a video seeing how I made those swipe skins, I'll put that in the description for you. Okay, so you see what I did there? Kind of just spread it around and let it level out on its own. Like there's a puddle right here, but it's gonna level out if you give it just a minute. And you can also use a palette knife if you want to too, okay? So you don't want it too thick. You don't want it to uh, be big puddles of paint on there or else it will crack. So you may be saying to yourself, well, why would I wanna do a Dutch pour design if I'm just gonna cut it up into small pieces for the uh, jewelry. What if I want to design a box top that needs a big paint skin? What if I want to design a book cover? Ha ha, you see, because I also design custom journal writing covers on books or art journaling books, and I sell those too. You gotta get creative with this, my friends. There is money to be made. So 
I have my little thin white layer of paint there. Don't mind the color choices here, okay? I just wanted to uh, grab any paint I had mixed up. So we're going with a uh, sage and gold palette. Go that way. Go this way. And maybe go this way. Why not? This ought to be funny. Don't worry, I will remove my skin before I start blowing. My paint skin, that is. That sounded very weird. Very, very weird. All right, so we're not gonna do anything fancy here, just a few colors. A little bit of this. English brown metallic color in there. Why not? I will add just a little more sage on top. Now it's going to blow off of the paper because there's a lot of paint on there, but the goal is to create a Dutch pour. Well, what is this? Look at this. We got to make sure that it's flat enough, okay? Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I am so mad at myself right now. <laughs> I thought I hit record and I didn't. Anyway, it absolutely blew out on the paper, as you can see. <laughs> oh, what a dummy. Anyway. This is exciting. You want to know why? Because if I want to create, like, let's say the pearl cell technique or a ring pour or a, a funnel pour, I can do that, even a Dutch pour. Now, we can let this dry, and we can actually take some scissors and cut out the white area and just have that Dutch pour part to slap over, let's say, a wooden box that you want to turn into a jewelry box or anything, a book cover, anything that you can think of that you can glue a skin down to. All right. So it definitely worked on that stencil paper. It would definitely work on pretty much, you know, any non slipper or non-stick surface. But yeah, you can see it definitely works. So this is exciting. Look at all that beautiful lacing and cells I got. It's really pretty. It reminds me almost like of an ocean palette, like an ocean themed Dutch pour. I'll have to remember this palette. But anyway, so we know that works, right? So you can create any kind of custom skins that you want, or you can let the drippings on your table dry and just peel them up. I prefer to create my own, my own custom ones, all right? But that's totally up to you. So let me show you now one of my big sellers at the craft fairs. This is just a wooden box that I got at Michael's. Nothing special. Has the little latch on it, okay? And what I like to do is use my paint skins in a creative way to make a design on the upper portion here. Now, you can go ahead and stain these boxes if you want. I happen to like the natural wood look like that. You can put just a little bit of a varnish on it so it's not so rough feeling, all right? But what I'll do first for the design, I'm not gonna go over the varnish and all of that with you because it's simple, you just brush it on, is I'll move my skin around and even something as simple as the edge of this is giving me inspiration for my design, okay? so. I'll move it around until I find something that I like. We can either go this angle or we can go this angle. Figure out which one looks better. I kind of like this here. And then what I'll do is I'll just cut the piece of skin where I like it. And I think I like it right about here, okay? So then what I'll do is kind of maybe just fold it down to try to make a little bit of a crease in it. So I know where I have to kind of cut. 
right? Make sure it's nice and flat. And I'll take it off. And using that crease I made as a guide, I will cut it. Ready? So that's what I like right there. And then before you go and glue it down, you have to make a decision on this half. Like for this design, I have to just figure out what color I want this to be. And I think I'm going to go with black. So first, I'm going to paint this area black before I do anything. This is just black acrylic paint. Next step, we need to glue it down. For that, I use some Mod Podge. So while I have a few minutes here, let me tell you some things that I make that are unique to other people that are selling at the fair. Now, finding a craft fair is extremely easy. Go on Facebook, join some uh, craft fair association groups. They list places in your areas for you to sign up. Very simple process to do. Look in your paper, your local paper. Um, look online, do some searches, you'll find a place. But one of the things that I do, which is very unique, and uh, n I've never seen anybody doing it at festivals, is I design book covers. Now, when I say books, I mean either this type of a book, like an art journal or a diary. Um, I am an art journaler. And what that means is I create my thoughts in art. Uh, here's one that I did. I'm going to show you a few, few of my art journals here. I designed this cover. I used a lot of texture. I have a photo frame in there, some flowers. Um, here's another one. I'll show you a few of my entries. And it's essentially you get a thought in your brain and you, you work it out on the pages. So, for example, happiness makes your soul feel light as a feather. This one, I was mad at my husband. Love stinks. Yeah, yeah. See the world under the sea. You see, they have different themes. All things I was thinking of when I was creating these pages. This one here was when, you know, we were having a lot of issues. Well, we still are in America. And it was titled just sitting here waiting for the world to change. So art journaling is a lot of fun. And I do that on the side just for myself. And, um, you know, there's a lot of meaning behind it. It is uh, a great way to express yourself. But just imagine we have these nice books that we can write or draw or color in. Why not create a lid for it? So this is what I do, and it's a big seller for me at the craft fairs. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to design one of these book covers. So hopefully you can add it to your inventory of things that you could sell at a craft fair. So not only am I showing you in this video how to make a jewelry box, I'm showing you how to create a custom book cover. And I'm also going to show you how to make the pop sockets. Now, if you want to know how to make the jewelry and or magnets, the first video I did shows that. And I show you how I made these pink and uh, red skins, pink skins. Oh, Lord. Green skins. <laughs> I show you how I made those. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see how I made that particular design, then... In the description of this video, I'll put the link for that video. And I also showed, like I said, how to make the jewelry in that one. Essentially, what I want to do over the next few weeks is I want to release a set of videos with different items that you could make to stockpile and bring to a craft show with you. So I just put some Mod Podge on the book cover and put my skin down. 
And now I'm using a Senelier 3D liner, which is essentially acrylic paint in a tube with a very fine point. I wanted to make a uh, geodish type of book cover, so we're going to use some crushed glass and some glitter and uh, even some resin. Yes, I'm going to show you how to use resin as a sealant on a book cover. So now I'm just going and adding some of this liner to the box also. And now what I'm going to do to fix my crystals first is I'm going to use some UV resin. This UV resin comes in a kit from Amazon. All the links will be in the description for you for these products. It comes with three bottles of the UV resin, a UV light, and some silicone tools to work with. Now, I'm not going to use this to cover the entire book. I'm just using it to fix my crystals. I like to use UV resin as like a glue, we'll say. So you go ahead, you put some down wherever you want things to stick, and then you hover the UV light over it for about 60 seconds. Now, this light did not come with the kit. I bought this separately, but it does come with its own little light. So for the sake of time, obviously, I've sped up some of this video. Once I cured the UV resin for 60 seconds, I shook off the book. And now you'll see the crystals are only where you want them. You don't have to worry about them moving around or anything like that. So now for the jewelry box, I decided to use the UV resin to add the glitter. Now, I could have used just regular glue to do this, but because I was, you know, working on a time limit here for the video's sake, I didn't want to wait five hours for glue to dry. So I used the UV resin, sprinkled on the glitter, and then used the UV light to cure it. Now it's time to use real resin. So this is KS Liquid Art Ultra UV Resin. You want to mix it for three minutes. Make sure you thoroughly scrape the bottom, the sides, and you scrape off your stick multiple times throughout the mixing process. Now I can use UV resin to put over the entire box if I wanted to, but UV resin really doesn't have a strong UV resistance to it which means it will yellow over time. So that's why I wanted to use a good art resin. And by the way, I'm just putting a very thin layer. There is no floating resin. It's just a very thin, as if you were painting glue onto a surface. You don't want volume. You just want the shine added to the surface. So now I did the same to the book and I made sure I went along that seam, like right up along the edge of it to seal it down. And then on the black half there on the outer edge, I had put a little bit of that black glitter in there too. So now we'll torch both of those things and let them go cure. I found this cute little pop socket mold at Michael's, believe it or not. I'm gonna see if I can find one on Amazon and put it in the description. So what I did was I took my skins and then I took a circle punch these you can find everywhere. We use them in scrapbooking and art journaling, but I used it to stick my skin inside of it and cut out circles. I did show this in the last video, by the way. Uh, so I cut out a circle, put it in the mold, and then what I did was I put a little bit of the UV resin in there. I spread it out evenly until it touched the sides of the mold and then I cured it with the light because this layer of resin was a little bit thinner, thicker, sorry, than uh, I did on the book and the jewelry box. I used the UV light on it for about three minutes just to make sure it was good and cured. Once I did that, I popped it out, turned it over, and then I resined the front side of it because that was actually the back side. I wanted a nice smooth surface on the back. Now you can just put the circle in the mold and pour the resin on it and be done with it. 
This was just an extra step I was taking. So I poured some more of that UV resin on, spread it around as I did the first time, cured it, and then I uh, popped it out. For the front side, however, I decided to use my heat gun just to make sure there were no air bubbles, which there weren't, but I just wanted to make sure because that's the side you're going to be seeing. So this is it popped out. It's nice and shiny. Put some E6000 on one of those pop socket attachments. Peel the back off and stick it to your phone. These are a huge seller at the craft fairs for me. So here are the final results. We have our book is all done. It is so pretty. I'm going to put the flash on so you can see all the sparkle. It's very hard to have this translate through the camera for you, but it is very, very sparkly and uh, shiny. And it's just, so wouldn't you love to create something in that or write down your daily thoughts in that? You know, and that's just my design. I mean, the designs are endless if you think about it. Uh, here we are with a little bit of flash. You can see all of the sparkle and how pretty it is. So are you ready to hear what these sell for at the festival? For this book here, I sell these for $50 each. Depending on how much the book costs and how much work I put into it is what I base the price off of. So that's a great item for you to carry. The next thing would be the jewelry box. Now, I made a, another jewelry box off to the side uh, that I didn't show you, that I will show you now. Uh, something like this can go for anywhere between $30 and $50, depending on the size. Um, it, again, a lot of things matter, you know, when it comes to that. How much work did you put in it? Um, the size of it. And yeah, it's a, a really, really fun thing to create. And people love to buy them. So I'm just giving you a little close-up with the flash. So you can see the sparkle and how pretty it is. Here is the smaller box I made. How cute is that? Absolutely adorable. Again, price would determine on how much money you have invested into making it. Size, you know, all, all of those things that I mentioned. So use your imagination Make yourself some income, put in a little bit of work. It does not take a lot to get started in doing craft fairs and art shows. And they are a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of people. They are just a joy. So here's our pop socket. These go anywhere between $15 to $20 each at a craft fair. And, uh, you know, the necklaces, again, depending on how much you put into it, you know, anywhere between $15 and $25, and even magnets. So I wish you the best of luck, and I hope you give it a try sometime in the near future. I made, I could not believe, $8,000 last year doing this, and it has just amped me up to get ready to sign up for the, the spring festivals and the fall festivals and have some fun with it. So coming up next, I'm going to show you the dry results of that Dutch pour that we blew out on the stencil paper. Now, it did move a little bit, but that was my fault. I put it in a not level place, but it still came out beautiful. I'll use it in a future video. And please just experiment with your techniques on some type of a non-stick surface. Have fun with it. Create some beautiful things. So here it is, my friends. It did move just in that one corner there again. This was my fault, but it dried perfectly fine, and we will use that in a future video. The lacing and cells all held up. Everything is good. So thank you for joining me. Until the next time, which will be Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, happy pouring.